What is up, homies? Max Fire Fantasy Report is back with some fantastic data for your fantasy team. Now, obviously the production value of these videos is bad because I don't spend a lot of time on production. My friends, I don't do retakes. I don't do any edits. Okay, I don't run a bunch of streaming information at the bottom and put fancy graphics up because my time is spent getting wins. Okay, now if you want production, high quality production, just go follow that channel, the, the Matthew Berry channel, get all the robots and puppies and Muppets and puppets and the whole thing they got over there. I'm not mad at them, you know, that's good. They, they got to have something for the eight-year-olds and the 12-year-olds in, in fantasy football and raise the next generation of fans because this game is not going anywhere. So I support all that good stuff. Just know you're not getting out of here. What you're getting is straight data. So while you might hate on my video, you can't hate on my data, and that's the only reason I'm here, to give you that data. So give me a like for data. Otherwise, if you want the Muppets, Puppets, and Puppies, you know where to go. Now, I've identified some great pickups. I was going to do this video on Tuesday, give you guys a chance to lay your waivers, but, um, you know, I just got tired, so I didn't do it. And then Wednesday came around, it was too late. So, hey, today's Thursday, I'm getting around to it. So uh, if you've ever been lazy or just tired, then you feel me right there. Now, nevertheless... The waivers are now free agents, and I've got the information that you need to fix your, your fantasy team. Now, let's talk about tight ends, because a lot of those tight ends got hurt. You know, Delaney Walker and uh, Greg Olson got hurt. So two teams in your league need tight ends unless they have backups already. And on top of that, there's several tight ends that drastically underperformed for the expectations of their owner. But if you've been listening to me, you would have known that that's not an underperformance. That's exactly what's to be expected. For instance, Jimmy Graham left you hanging. Evan Ingram left you hanging. Um, Njoku left you hanging. You know, all these people you guys, some of you guys thought were hype and, and sleepers. No, okay? Max was right, okay? Gronk is the only way to beat the ADP on, t on uh, tight ends. However, he's also injury risk, and, um, you know, I think he he's a good sell target, actually. I think you should sell Gronk if you can get someone back like David Johnson. You know, obviously you can't trade a one-for-one. One. You have to include a running back with your Gronk, but you can maybe pull David Johnson or Zeke right now because they had bad weeks. So that's good buying information, okay? Let's get into the tight ends like I was talking about. Now, Cook destroyed everything last week. We know this, okay? But I'm going to give you the real insight here, okay? John Gruden said specifically he wants to run an offense like Kansas City and Travis Kelsey. He specifically said he wants to run an offense like Philadelphia and Zach Ertz. He specifically said he thinks that Jared Cook is a special, talented, receiving tight end that he wants to utilize. This is from the head coach. You guys... This is not the customary one-week Jared Cook performance. This is not going to stop. This is going to be all year. Am I saying he's going to get 180 yards every game? No. But what I'm telling you is Jared Cook being a top tight end is a new thing. Okay? Get ready for a new player in the tight end era, and it's Jared Cook. He's here to stay. He's here just like Greg Olson's been here this whole time, and Jimmy Graham's been here this whole time. Guess who's new to the, to the big boy block? And that's Delaney Walker. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Jared Cook. Why? Because Gruden, you guys, this is a brand new team. We didn't know until just this week what Gruden's team was going to even look like, and we want to see more. Well, we've got some information, and some information is better than no information. You know what I mean? So, uh, anyways, I'm telling you right now, if you have any problems at tight end, if you don't have Trey Burton, if you don't have Zach Ertz or Gronk, go grab Jared Cook. He's probably already taken. But if they drop him, maybe after this game, maybe he has a bad game, go pick him up. Okay, if you have a tight end problem, he's the number one waiver ad this week if you have a tight end problem. <clears throat> now, other notable members that could be on your waiver wire and maybe Jared Cook is gone, then Kittle, Gates are uh, available on a lot of leagues, not all of them, so check for those. And then most leagues have Ricky Seals-Jones available. Now, Ricky Seals-Jones, he didn't have a bad week last week. He had an okay week. All right, and this week he's facing a, the Rams, and the Rams are going to score points on the Cardinals. Okay, this car, the Cardinals are going to have to score. They're going to be throwing, and they can't throw it all to Fitz uh, to uh, Fitzgerald. 
Okay, so Ricky Seals is a good good opportunity here. Not only that, the linebackers for the Rams are pretty weak. I mean, that's their weakest position. So that's where Ricky Seals Jones is going to be operating in. So this is a really sneaky week to, to play RSJ. And uh, and so, you know, but don't go over Cook. Cook is legit. I'm trying to tell you right now, I'm hanging my hat right here. I'm not giving you that middle ground stuff where I think he's only going to be good for a couple weeks because he's got good matchups the next couple weeks. No, this guy's here for real, for good. Okay, this is a new era for Jared Cook. So keep that in mind. You heard it right here first. None of that soft stuff. None of that baby stuff here, okay? None of that. He could be good for a couple of weeks. Or we'll, we'll see next week stuff. Well, of course we'll see next week, man. I need the information now. What do you think? If you don't know, why do you have a show? You know what I mean? If you don't even have an idea. But <clears throat> anyways, I'm done ranting. Moving on down to, let's go to the wide receivers. Now, the number one pickup in wide receivers is Anunwa. I think his name is Quincy Anunwa. And um, he did really good last year. This is also a new era for the Jets with Sam Darnold. So we're going to see how they operate. And it looks like they're going to operate pretty good. You know, they're not that good yet. And they still operated pretty good. When they get better, when Sam Darnold gets better every game, he's going to get better. He's going to gain more and more rapport with the Nunwa. Okay, Robbie Anderson's great. But he only got one catch, one target. I know he scored a touchdown, but on one target all game, and another one got like 9, 10, 11 targets, something like that, and he had at least eight catches. So uh, he's the guy that I would pick up at wide receiver if you need a wide receiver. All these other guys I put up there because they're good and I like them, but I probably wouldn't pick them up because I probably have a pretty good team. So <clears throat> Beasley, he's there to stay. Okay, he's probably the number one wide receiver on the Cowboys. He's great for PPR, and he can even get you touchdowns, okay? He's not going to explode on a whole lot of games, but he's got a very high floor. He's a solid, you know, flex wide receiver. Um, Philip Dorsett, let's talk about him just for a minute, because out there in New England, we all know they kind of lack targets, but they paid Hogan. So Hogan's there to stay. Gronk is there to stay. And now let's look at Philip Dorsett. The guy is a number one pick. He's a first-round pick from the Colts, so he's got talent built into him. And now we've seen how... The Patriots take other people's players and make them a lot better. They are able to accentuate their skill sets and take advantage of all the things they do well. Well, let's see if that happens for Philip Dorsett. He's a sneaky stash, okay? He had a great week last week. Hogan got ignored last week. Now, it could be a product of what the defense gives them. That's how the Patriots operate, so you can never tell for sure. But let's hold on to him. Put him on your, on your bench and hold on to him for a couple of weeks and see if he's the new thing. In New England he definitely can be the new thing is always a new thing and I know what you're thinking I, you're thinking but Edelman's coming back that's true but Edelman's gonna have that underneath role he's his role is solidified okay this is the bigger role this is the deep role this is the wide out two role and so who knows you know the wide out two role with Tom Brady is just like the wide out two role with with Green Bay or Aaron Rodgers it's valuable you never know who he's gonna throw the ball to because he hits who's ever open so Keep Dorsett on your bench if you have an extra spot, but you probably don't. Um, if you have only one spot for a wide receiver, get a Nunwa. This guy's got the biggest, the, the, the strongest case for a season-long value, even though the upside with Dorsett's a little bit more because he's playing with Tom Brady. The downside with playing with Tom Brady is he can leave you hanging. You might not get anything that week because it, all, the, all the passes went to a different receiver. So even if Phil Dorsett has a good year, his consistency week to week will probably be pretty bad. So... Go with a new one. The guy's a lock. I know he's not sexy pick. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody likes the Jets. Nobody believes in the rookie quarterback. That's why he's available on the free agent wire. Because if he had any of those different people already, he would be gone. Okay, because his stats show in week one that you should pick him up. Don't wait till week two. If you have to see something twice, it's too late. Everybody else saw it twice. You've got to act when you see something happen. Once, twice is the most. By three times, is definitely over. All right? So a was the guy there. Now, uh, let's go to running backs. I'm going to start at the bottom here. Um, Buck Allen, don't even worry about him, okay? He's decent. He's an okay stash if you're in a deep 16, 14, 18 team league, something like that, fine. Otherwise, leave him, let him roll. TJ Yeldon, what I like to do is pick him up, even if I don't have Fournette, especially if I'm playing the team that has Fournette this week. Now, just before the game, if TJ Yeldon is playing, or if uh, Fournette is not playing, you can just plug and play TJ Yeldon. He's a nice RB2 for you. Or, if Fournette is playing, you can just drop Yeldon just before the game. The, the other team won't be able to pick him up. So, And then you can go pick up Eckler or Lindsey. Now, if it's between the two, you're picking up Eckler. Okay? I'm picking a stand for Eckler. Okay? This guy's not a, a running back 40. Okay? This guy's a running back 2. 
Well, he could potentially be a running back one if something happens to Melvin Gordon. I'm not just telling you he had a good week last week and he keep an eye on him. Like, that's obvious. You know, you can get that anywhere. Everybody's telling you the obvious stuff. I'm so tired of that stuff. I'm telling you right now, you need to pick this guy up. This production is not going anywhere. Before game one in the preseason, he was averaging almost five, more than five yards a carry, over five yards a carry. And if you're thinking to yourself, hey, that's preseason, I'm telling you what, the game one, he averaged almost eight yards a carry. And I'm not talking catches. His catches were great. He scored a touchdown on his catches. His runs were over eight yards a carry, my homies, or not over. It was about, it was 7.8 yards a carry. That's not going anywhere, and if you think the Chargers don't see that, oh, they do. You should see, they're giving the running backs over 30 carries a game. This guy right here is not going anywhere. He's going to give you Philip Lindsay numbers and Eckler numbers that they got this week every single week, I'm telling you. Yeah, he'll have some weeks where he won't, but for a guy you can get on the waiver wire right now that's being assessed as, you know, a wide receiver of 40 or a stash target, or he's on most free agent lists right now. You just go pick him up. Nobody even knows about this guy. And I'm telling you right now to pick him up. If you didn't listen to me on this, you're the same guy that didn't listen to Alvin Kamara last year. Okay, so that's your problem. <clears throat> this is the guy to get. Now, Philip Lindsay, I'll talk a little bit about him because it's kind of interesting. He was, he went to college in Colorado, so to play on the Broncos is a nice, cool hometown story. And he's a great little running back. You can tell when he's running that he's faster than all the other players. Now, not long speed, but I should say quicker. He's quicker than everybody. He turns the corner, he gets upfield, and he's burning. And, um, you know, you might be able to catch him from behind if you're real fast, if you have elite speed. But other than that, you're not catching him side to side. And he runs up the t in the middle of the tackles. So he's good running back. He's not just a, you know, flanker or a wheel route running guy who always tries to break things out the side. He actually runs up the gut. So he's a very good running back. Here's the problem is that Royce Freeman is a very good running back too, and he's a bigger and stronger and can also catch. So um, while he doesn't have the same speed that Lindsey has, Royce Freeman's not gonna go anywhere. And if something ever happens to Royce Freeman, like an injury or something, then they still have Booker. And so the upside on Lindsey's nowhere near as Eckler. Eckler's already there. If he doesn't even get an injury to, to Melvin Gordon, he's already gonna be this year's, uh, he's gonna be a big star, okay? He is a star. You just might not recognize it yet, and nobody else is telling you, but I'm telling you. Eckler and Cook, my homies. I'm laying my hat down right there, at least this week, and we'll see what happens after this week is over. You know, new data always changes things. But uh, you gotta play for season long. You want your team to finish strong. Don't worry about winning right now as much. I mean, you don't wanna lose a game or lose two games in the start of the season, so I'm not saying that you know, it doesn't matter, but just keep your eyes long term, okay? You wanna be peaking at the end of the season because you want to win your last few games. That's where all the money is. <clears throat> so, uh, TJ Yeldon, I told you about him. Um, you know, just hold, he's a nice handcuff, okay? I'd keep him, actually, if I had a spot because Leonard Fournette, the way he runs, is likely to get injured. Not only that, we already know he has a so sore hamstring, so the likely of re -injury the likelihood of re-injury is very, very high compared to a player who has no injury at all. And so that should be obvious. So you're, you're, you know, you should have two eyebrows raised for TJ Yeldon right now, you know, if something happens to Fournette, that boy's going to be a, you know, a, a potential RB1, you know, at least an RB2. All right, now let's get into the juicy quarterbacks, all right? Now, some of you guys got let down by your quarterback last weekend, and what you need to do is not panic. Relax, okay? They're going to be fine, all of them, okay? Everybody that you saw that you didn't like is going to be better, all right? Now, I want to talk specifically about Trubisky and then a little bit about Jared Goff. <clears throat> Now, I'll start with Jared Goff, and I'll finish with Trubisky. Jared Goff, we all know who he is. We know that offense is legit. There's no way the quarterback in that offense is not going to score points. So he's a very good piece. You know, even when they use the running game, they throw it to Gurley quite a bit. And so Goff is going to have a lot of numbers. Add that to their defense. Their defense is going to put them in short field position and uh, win a lot. You know, with Donald uh, there now, and they got a lot of six sacks, and um, they were just, you know, they – they look like a really good defense. The offense looks great. They're completely loaded. So Jared Goff is going to be one of the biggest beneficiaries of that huge system that he's at the helm of. So keep that in mind. And then Trubisky, while you probably saw that game, and he didn't look that good, he still scored, I think, 17 points because he runs for a touchdown and he ran for first downs and, uh, and they kept the pace moving. Here's one thing you need to realize is that when they were up 20-3, to three, okay, they're on third and one 
and they decide to empty out the running backs and go with a full wide receiver set and put Trubisky in the shotgun. On third and one, when they're up 20 to three on their division rival. Now one, that's terrible play calling, absolutely horrendous play calling. All you do is give it to Jordan Howard, who's averaging five and a half yards a carry. Let him get you one yard. He can fall forward for two or three yards. If he just falls and trips, he get two or three yards. If they would have done a quarterback sneak, they would have got a yard. They could have done two in a row and got two yards. You know what I mean? But they want to be tricky. They believe in their offense. They believe in Trubisky so much that even on third and one, up 20 to three against their division rival, they're going to empty set it and give their second year quarterback a pass. So while that's terrible play calling from an NFL perspective, for us from fantasy, that means Trubisky is going to be getting a lot better. Had he scored two more touchdowns, which is at least what he should have scored, they had some wide open people that he missed. And if you think he sucks, he just doesn't look good. It's his first game of his second year. Relax on some of these guys. Deshaun Watson, relax, okay? They're going to get better this next game. And uh, Trubisky's got a lot of way to go to get better, but his floor is absolutely huge. He runs the ball, that counts for a lot. Just look around all the other quarterbacks who have high floors, they're all running quarterbacks. On top of that, the offense believes in him so much that they go away from the run even when it's working because they want to feature Trubisky. On top of that, they, <clears throat> They have a quick pace system, which means they're going to have more reps per game. So the reason he got two or three touchdown opportunities that he didn't cash in on was because they were running a ton of plays, and he should have caught, cashed in on at least two of those. And that would have been three touchdowns, one of them rushing. He'd have had a great day. And keep in mind, he's going to get better every single week as they learn together. Okay, He's a second-year quarterback. So Trubisky's got a long way to go, and that was his bad game. That was a bad game for Trubisky. So keep that in mind. That it's gonna. That's his floor. He hit his floor. A lot of players hit their floor. Troy Burton, you know, on that same game, he was open two or three times in the end zone or headed towards the end zone, and he didn't get the ball. So they're gonna see all these things on tape, and they're gonna make corrections. And even with him not getting the touchdowns, he still got six catches for about seventy yards. So that's his floor. Okay, these guys are hitting their floor, and you can't panic because the floor is really not that bad. If your worst game from your tight end is seven points. That's pretty good, okay? That's pretty good for their worst game. So don't freak out yet. Now, um, <clears throat> on, on, Deshaun Jock, on Deshaun Watson, look, when you're facing Bill Belichick with a lot of time to prepare for you, you're at a disadvantage immediately. He's the best coach in the NFL. You give him multiple weeks to prepare for you, you're gonna have problems. On top of that, Deshaun Watson, it's his second year. He didn't even play a full year his first year. So give him a break. Okay, he was rusty. Um, missed some wide open throws and he was playing Bill Belichick you know he's not gonna out out duel Tom Brady in week one when Tom Brady's got you know 14 years of experience and eight Super Bowls and Deshaun Watson's this is his eighth game so relax on Deshaun Watson as a matter of fact you should make a trade offer and try to go pick him up if you don't have him all right so that's uh, that's what I got now tonight we've got Baltimore Cincinnati and um, this is a, a revenge game from New Year's Eve, and if you recall, last year when they played, Baltimore lost that game. Baltimore lost that game, and Cincinnati sent Buffalo to the playoffs. Baltimore didn't make the playoffs because Cincinnati knocked them out on New Year's Eve. So this is a revenge game, so it should be pretty exciting. I've got it going 23-1 to Baltimore. All right, I got Baltimore winning by two points, and uh, so that's what I got, my homies. It is Thursday. Thursday Night Football is tonight, so I hope you enjoy it. Give me a thumbs up down there. And uh, if I get enough thumbs up, man, I promise you guys, I will do these things on Tuesdays so that you can hit these guys up on the waiver wire. I mean, I'll try to do it Tuesdays anyway, but, um, you know, some of you guys, you don't give nobody no likes, man. Some of you guys are the same dudes who just like, when you open the door, you just let it close behind you, you know. But some of you guys, you give credit where it's due. And so uh, that's why I'm doing these videos for my homies, for my cool peeps. You know, people who've been following me since I got started last month and uh, people who are just seeing this video for the first time. So anyways, I know that these takes are a little bit different, but that's what we want, right? We want that same cookie cutter stuff. I mean, that stuff's always going to be there. So why not have alternatives? You know what I mean? All right, y'all. Have fun and I'm out.